Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you Mr. Herbert Marshall in tonight's presentation of... Suspense. Tonight, Autolite presents part two of one of the most famous of all literary puzzles, Charles Dickens' unfinished novel, The Mystery of Edwin Drood. Our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Hello, Senator. How's our legislative leader? Hello. What's this I hear about you being up for assault and battery? Oh, that's a stay full battery, Senator. The Autolite stay full. That fit, fine, and famous battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Then you're not in trouble. Ah, uh, not with an Autolite stay full, Senator. Fiberglass mats protect every positive plate against shedding and flaking to give the Autolite stay full battery longer life as proved by tests conducted according to accepted life cycle standards. And my Autolite battery dealer will substantiate that story, Harlow? He sure will, Senator. And he's the expert whose services all makes of batteries. Friends, to quickly locate your nearest Autolite battery dealer, call Western Union by number... And ask for Operator 25. I'll gladly tell you the name of your nearest Autolite battery dealer, where you can get an Autolite stay-full. The battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite presents Charles Dickens' The Mystery of Edwin Drood, starring Mr. Herbert Marshall, hoping once again to keep you in suspense. When the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness, he shall save his soul alive. So it has been said, so it has been written. But what of him who strives to turn away in torment and desperation and finds that he cannot? What is it that will happen to him? What is it that will happen to me? It was on a gray Christmas morn that I, John Jasper, instructor in music at Cloisterham College, sought the answers to those questions. I sought them within myself, within my music, within the paling stars seen dimly through the organ loft windows. But no answers came, only a memory or a dream. I seemed to see a man walking alone through the deserted night-blackened streets of Cloisterham. The deserted streets which were suddenly no longer deserted. memory was gone, the dream was over, and I was at my gatehouse lodgings looking for him who should have been there, looking for the man I suddenly knew would never be there again. Edwin! Edwin! Dean Chris Parkle, open up. It's John Dasper. Open up, I say. Uh, uh, Jasper? What is it, man? My nephew, Edwin Rule. Where is he? Edwin? Yes, he went to the river last night to look at the storm with Neville Landless. With Neville? Yes, and he never came back. Where is he? Oh. Ask Landless where he is. Neville's not home either. Not home? I, I, I'll be down directly. As he joined me, the dread realization of what might have transpired was clearly writ upon Dean Crisparkle's face. Hurriedly, he roused a number of cottage servants from their holiday beds, and a search was begun. A search for my missing nephew, Edwin Drood, and for the Dean's missing protege, Neville Landless. Uh, 
There it is. The river. The river they went to see at the height of the storm last night. You... You never saw them again, Jasper? No, neither one returned. Was there any quarrel between them? Any hint of the disagreements they'd had upon other occasions? None. The Christmas Eve dinner had gone exactly as I'd planned. They'd shaken hands. Uh, Apparently resolved their differences. And when they left, they went arm in arm. Uh, tell me, Jasper, whose idea was it to visit the river? Was it Neville's? I'll not cast doubt where it may be undeserved. It could have been anyone's suggestion. Mine, Edwin's. I don't like this, Jasper. Oh, there's a feeling about it all that strikes chill to my bones. Oh, hark, one of the searching parties. They found someone, Jasper. They found... You take yes. your hands off me. What right have you Edwin to seize my person missing. like this? Easy does it now, take sir. Take them off. Easy, if you please, Mr. Landless. Take your hands off me. What right have you to seize my person like this? Will you take them off me? In a moment, sir, in a moment. There you be, Dean Chris Barkle. We found your man, as you see. Yes, Joe, I see you may release him. Aye, sir. But it's belligerent he is. I'd be aware of him if I was you. Didn't want to return with us at all, he didn't. What is all this, sir? What is the meaning? I was out for an early morning walk when these blackguards seized me bodily. They forced me to return here and said it was by your orders. As it was, Neville. But why, sir? Surely there is some explanation. Why? Where is my nephew, Landless? <laughs> Your nephew? Yes, Edwin Drood. Where is he? Why ask me? Why should I know of Drood's whereabouts? Because you were the last person in his company, and he's not to be found. Speak, sir. Where is he? Uh, Stay, stay, Jasper. Permit me to question him. (coughs) Uh, Neville, you left Mr. Jasper's residence last night with Edwin Drood? I? Uh, Yes, sir. You went down to the river together? Yes, to see the reaction of the storm upon it. How long did you stay there? Oh, it's, uh, ten minutes, more or less. And then? What Drew took leave of me. Did he say where he was going Why, then? yes, to return to Mr. Jasper's. That was the last you saw of him? The very last. If something's happened to Drew, I most certainly had nothing to do with it. What are those stains upon your jacket, Mr. Landless? Huh? It stains? And that walking stick you're carrying, Joe. The same stains are upon it. Aye, so they are. Blood stains they be, Mr. Jasper. And the stick, to whom does that belong? Why, to Mr. Landless, sir. We took it off him. Had to, the fuss and all he was putting up. Well, of course they're bloodstains. I fought with these men thinking they were footpads. If there's blood has been spilled, it must be theirs or mine. Uh, Neville, I think you'd best accompany us to the authorities. At my suggestion, we repair to the residence of Cloistrum's Lord High Mayor, Mr. Thomas Sapsee. And as we stood there in his parlor, the rendering of authority was as I knew it would be. Not unlike the person of Mr. Sapsy himself. Unimaginative, dull, stupid. Well, gentlemen, this all seems quite clear to me, quite clear. <clears throat> and I am one who has spared little pain, little pain, gentlemen, in training myself to see things clearly. They may be clear to you, sir, but they are far from being so to me. Patience, young man, patience. Justice will be done here of that you may rest well assured. Yes, well assured. <clears throat> and now, allow me to enumerate the situation. Point number one. There have been several witnessed quarrels between the two young men in question. Oh. The missing Edwin Drew to the here present Neville Landless. The quarrels had been repaired, sir. Mr. Jasper himself bears witness to that. I have stated there was no quarrel or apparent difference at your last meeting, Mr. Landless. Quite so, quite so. One meeting without quarrel, several with. The scales are unbalanced, I quote. Particularly, one might say, as the subject or object of those quarrels was the fiancé of Mr. Drood. But surely, Mr. Sapsey, it is not necessary to bring a young lady's name into this. I apologize for the necessity, Mr. Jasper, but it would seem to me that the charming and delightful Miss Rosa is truly at the heart of the matter confronting us. At its heart, yes. In one respect, I am forced to agree with you. There is no doubt that Landis was extremely envious of Edwin's good fortune in being betrothed of Rosa. Yes, as I say, the heart. (coughs) Now, point number two. The two gentlemen disappeared together into the night. Point number three. Mr. Drood never appears again. Point four. Mr. Landless is apprehended upon the heath, obviously fleeing close to him, and is returned only by force. Point five. Unexplained bloodstains are found upon his person and upon the stick he was carrying. I was not fleeing cloisterum, and the bloodstains are not unexplained. Circumstances indicate otherwise, Mr. Landless. Yes, otherwise. 
And the taking of a fellow creature's life is to take something that don't belong to you, you know. Taking of a fellow creature's... What, what madness is this? Oh, Mr. Jasper, surely you don't believe that... My interest I... lies only in the return of my nephew. And if he's never to return in seeing that justice is rightly done. Yes, precisely what I had in mind, Mr. Jasper. Precisely. My further suggestions to Mr. Sapsey were immediately carried out. Placards were posted, the river dragged. A feverish search began. Days went by, then weeks. And the end result was nothing. No trace of Edwin Drood was ever found. Finally, when all hope was abandoned, Mr. Sapsey delivered his final resolution. Uh, it uh, would appear, gentlemen, that the uh, mystery of Edwin Drood has not as yet been solved. No, not solved. However, certain horrible suspicions as yet remain. In the interests of all concerned, therefore, I make the following suggestion. <clears throat> it is that Mr. Neville Landless remove his presence from the city of Cloisterham, and unless there comes a time when certain... Horrible suspicions no longer exist that he remain away from here forever. Late afternoon of that same day, I went to see Rosa. We met in the garden of the seminary house. You wish to see me, Mr. Jasper? That is a desire which has lived with me for a long while, Rosa. Only the unhappy circumstances of the past few weeks have prevented its fulfillment. And you feel that Mayor Sapsey's announcement has now cleared the way for you? Not for me. For us. Grief does not come to an end with an official pronouncement, Mr. Jasper. Surely even the natural sadness you feel must be tinged with relief. Relief? You no longer are faced with the prospect of a forced, distasteful marriage to Edwin. You're free of your promise to your parents. And now that Edwin's gone, there's... There's nothing to prevent our getting married at once. Our getting married? I'm sorry I put it so bluntly, my dear, but we waited so long, kept our love for each other buried so deeply. Surely you can't blame me for speaking so frankly now. No, and with Edwin gone, there's no need for me to be silent. You have my solemn word for it, Mr. Jasper, that there is not one drop of love in my heart for you, rather only loathing and hatred. Rosa! I've always despised you, though I tried to hide it for Edwin's sake despised you because you pursued me with your eyes, with your thoughts, whispering to me in your mind of your obscene love, even though I was engaged to Edwin. Edwin, the nephew you so falsely pretended, was the dearest thing on earth to you. Rosa, you're overwrought. Oh, the strain of these past weeks. You refuse to believe. I can't believe it, my dear. I love you, an old man. The man I love, the man I still love, is Neville Landless. Landless? Yes, Neville, the man I was going to marry. What do you mean, Rosa? You were going to marry Edwin? No, Mr. Jasper. You told me you were. That was before Edwin and I released each other from our vows, Mr. Jasper. Released? Then, Edwin didn't have to die. No, Mr. Jasper. Whether Edwin was alive or dead, I was free to marry the man of my choice. <laughs> Autolite is bringing you Mr. Herbert Marshall in The Mystery of Edwin Drood. Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Hello, our committee is investigating. And what have you found, Senator? That the Autolite stay full battery... Needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Now, that's not all, Senator, because the Autolite Stay Full battery gives longer life, as proved by tests conducted according to accepted life cycle standards. Yes, Harlow, and you know what's responsible. Why, those fiberglass retaining mats that surround every positive plate to reduce shedding and flaking and hold the power-producing materials in place. And we found the Autolite Stay-Full battery is the favorite of millions of car owners from coast to coast. Thank you, Senator. Friends, see your Autolite battery dealer. He services all makes of batteries, 
and he has an Autolite stay full for your car if a replacement is needed. To quickly locate him, phone Western Union by number and ask for Operator 25. I'll tell you the name of your nearest Autolite battery dealer where you can get an Autolite stay full, the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Herbert Marshall in Elliot Lewis's production of The Mystery of Edwin Drood, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. How does one relate the ending of a world, the stunning collapse of all that has meaning, of all that is life? I will not attempt to do so. For everything that can be said was said on that fateful afternoon. And so the story of Edwin Drood was over. Or so I thought. Good day to you, Mr. Jasper. What? Oh, it's you, Duddles. Aye, him what is known as old Duddles, it be. Come to pay another visit to the resting place of the Olins, Mr. Jasper? I don't no, know, Duddles. As a matter of fact, I hadn't even noticed that I was walking past the crypt. My mind was elsewhere, I imagine. I thought perhaps you might be coming round for another lesson in burying dead bodies, Mr. Jasper. What's meant by that remark, Duddles? Well, now I recalls one night old daughters gave you a lesson about finding bodies of the old ones, tapped here and there with his hammer he did, pointing out the hollow walls. Remembers, don't you? Oh, yes, yes, I believe I recall something like that. An evening without anything to do, idle curiosity. I could have been, Mr. Jasper, though it didn't seem as such on last Christmas Eve, it didn't. What about last Christmas Eve? Why, you was down here again, Mr. Jasper, tapping the walls with Duddle's hammer yourself, you was. You're mistaken. I was nowhere near the crypt on Christmas Eve. Perhaps. Perhaps. And I'll wager you had a bottle or two of holiday cheer beneath your belt at the time. Perhaps. Though I would have swore it were you. <laughs> Mr. Jasper, come in. And who may you be, sir? Datchery is the name, Dick Datchery. Came calling, found you out, made myself at home. So I note. This? Favorite of mine, mulled wine. Thought I'd prepare, honor the occasion and all. The occasion of an absolute stranger making himself at home in my lodgings. Not ordinary circumstances, hmm? Quite agree. Nevertheless, honorable occasion... Then perhaps you'd care to explain, Mr. Datchery. Gladly. Gladly. <sighs> Perfect, sir. Won't you join me? I'm awaiting that explanation, sir. I bring you greetings, sir. Greetings from whom? Your dear boy, Mr. Jasper. Greetings from Edwin Drood. Greetings from Edwin? I sent you the best. Apologizes for not writing. Trust you're not worried. Told you, didn't I? Honorable occasion. Huh, indeed, this is an occasion, Mr. Datchery. I've been uh, worried sick about the dear boy. You found him well? Blooming, best of health. Where is he? Where did you meet with him? London, some lodging house. Kept meeting on stairs, natural thing. Of course, quite natural. Business took me to Cloisterham. Told Edwin. Made me promise a greeting. Here I am. Care to try the wine? Quite good. Oh, my apologies, Mr. Datchery. Certainly I would. Toast to Edwin. To Edwin. Ah. Mm. Perfect. Well, you're on my way now. Beauty over. Uh, one moment, Mr. Datchery. I, I must write Edwin and tell him how happy you've made me. What's the dear boy's address? You haven't got it. He moved. Didn't say where. Then there's no more you can tell me about him, where he can be reached? Nothing. I see. Wondering if it's a tall tale, Mr. Jasper. 
No rail greetings? No rail, Edwin? Surely that's a possibility, Mr. Datchery. Ordinarily, not now. Mementos. Wanted you to have them. Remember him. Uh, duty's fully discharged. I'll be leaving. Good day, Mr. Jasper. Excellent one. I scarcely heard him leave this Mr. Datchery. I was staring at the objects he'd placed upon the table. A watch and chain, Edwin's watch and chain. He'd been wearing them the night of the big storm. The last night he'd been seen alive. Mr. Datchery! Mr. Jasper, one moment, please. Huh. Good afternoon, Rosa. Oh, have you heard the news, Mr. Jasper? What news, Rosa? It concerns Edwin Drood. Edwin? Yes, he's alive, Mr. Jasper. Edwin's alive. Oh, did you hear me, Mr. Jasper? Did you hear what I said about Edwin? He's alive. That's a rather astounding statement, Rosa. I know. I, I could scarcely believe it myself. But, but here, this came to me in the post today from London. It's a letter from Edwin. Oh, isn't it wonderful, Mr. Jasper? We were all so certain that he was dead, that, that someone had killed him on the night of the storm. And there, there in your very hand is the proof that he's alive. No greater horror can visit the mind of man than the certain knowledge that he has suddenly become mad. And such was the horror which dwelt within me that fateful day. For it was the only explanation that was left. Edwin was dead. He had to be. The memory or dream that had lived with me since Christmas morn was too clear, too sharply etched for there to be any doubt. Edwin was dead. And yet, within a single afternoon, two people had brought me proof that Edwin was alive. Proof as clear, as sharply edged as that memory. A sane mind does not exist in a world of such paradox. I've gone mad. Time finds no haven within the dread confines of madness. Nor was that day an exception. Somehow, without my knowing of it, the day was gone. In what had been a sunlit sky, a night-darkened storm lay muttering ominously. My mud-spattered gaiters, bone-weary legs spoke mutely of hours of aimless wandering, hours of doing fruitless battle with that thing of horrible wonder apart, which was now my mind. And then I was where I'd been destined to be all along, the one place where the truth could be found, incontestable truth. I entered the venerable crypt of Cloisterham. Flashes of lightning etched in weird relief the ruined habitations of the dead. Half-standing pillars of stone assumed the attitude of watchful guardians, grinning evilly from their sentry boxes of the night. And the broken wall toward which I made my way was an ancient catacomb. Concealing within it the secret that only I knew was there. I climbed to its top and looked down upon the rubbish that almost filled the hollow space between its sides. A rusty spade lay nearby. I seized it and began to dig. Again, time became meaningless. There was nothing but the feverish labor of uncovering the truth, of finding a rusted watch and chain that would not possibly lie bright and untarnished on my table of uncovering a skeletonized human hand that was incapable of writing the letter I'd seen. And then the labor, too, became meaningless. There was no watch, no chain, no hand. There was nothing in there but rubble. Looking for something, Mr. Jasper? Landis! I asked you if you were looking for something, Mr. Jasper. What are you doing here? You were ordered to stay away from Cloyston. I came back, Mr. Jasper. Why? What are you doing here? The same thing that you are seeking the truth. The truth about what? The mystery of Edwin Drew. There is no mystery. Edwin Drew is alive. Is he? Ask Rosa. Ask Mr. Datchery. They'll tell you. They know he's alive. No, Mr. Jasper. You killed him last Christmas Eve. Edwin Drood is dead. He's not. I tell you. How could he be? If he were dead, why isn't he lying in this grave? The grave in which I... 
The grave in which you buried him? No. There was no grave. Only a dream. It was all a dream. What was a dream, Mr. Costa? Everything. Following him back to the river. My hands around his throat. Hiding his body here in this wall. It was all a dream. Can't you understand? I've been driven out of my mind by a dream. I didn't do it. But you did, Mr. Jasper. You're a fool, Landless. Look for yourself. This grave I prepared for him is empty. He isn't there. No, but he was here until two weeks ago. Two weeks ago? That was when a London detective and I found what was left of him. Catchery? Yes. With the help of Durdles and his invaluable hammer, we found Edwin Drood. Found the watch which identified him. You told me just now how you killed him. The watch. And Rosa's letter. Written several years ago. Reposted from London. Shall we go now, Mr. Jasper? Go? You took me before the authorities once. Now it's my time to take you. <laughs> Prospect of the gallows make you happy, Jasper? In a way, Lenders. At least I'll go to it. Knowing that I wasn't mad... Suspense. Presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for Autolite, world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. Autolite is proud to serve the greatest names in the industry. That's why during the early months of this year, as we did a year ago, the Autolite family will join together in saluting the leading car manufacturers who install Autolite products as original equipment. Our Autolite family includes some 30,000 men and women in Autolite plants in the United States, Canada, and many foreign countries, and the 18,000 people who have invested a portion of their savings in Autolite, as well as thousands of Autolite distributors and dealers, and the many leading manufacturers who use Autolite products as original equipment. Our Autolite family will salute the DeSoto Division of Chrysler Corporation on the next Autolite Suspense television program. If you live in a television area, check the day and time of suspense so that you will be sure to see this program. Next week, we recreate an historical puzzle as we attempt to locate a sunken treasure... The story, based on fact, is called Gold of the Adomar. Our star, Mr. John Hodiak. That's next week on Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Lucian Morowick, and conducted by Lud Gluskin. The Mystery of Edwin Drood was adapted from Charles Dickens' unfinished novel by Sidney Marshall. In tonight's story, Ben Wright was heard as landless. Featured in the cast were Betty Harford, Joseph Kearns, Ramsey Hill, Charles Davis, and William John Stone. And remember, next week, Mr. John Hodiak in Gold of the Adomar. This is the CBS Radio Network.